Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 25th of January. India says troops had minor face-off with China in Sikkim border area. Afghanistan prepares for fighting season as peace talks with Taliban crawl. And Nepal's election commission decides not to legitimize either of the two factions of ruling NCP. And now for all the details. The Indian Army said on Monday that the Indian and Chinese troops were involved in a minor face-off last week on their shared border in Sikkim in the eastern Himalayas, underlining the tense situation at the border. The Army, however, clarified the face-off was mutually resolved and provided no further details. The Indian and Chinese troops were involved in a minor face-off last week in a disputed stretch of their shared border in Sikkim in the eastern Himalayas. The Indian Army said on Monday, underlining the fraught situation at the border. The latest incident came as nuclear-armed India and China have been in a tense standoff since last April in the Himalayan region of Ladakh and have since then bolstered forces all along the over 2,300-mile border. The Indian Army said in a statement it is clarified that there was a minor face-off at Nakula area of North Sikkim on 20 January 2021 and the same was resolved by local commanders as per established protocols. There are contentious issues but both sides should move forward uh, as committed to uh, bring the standoff to an end as soon as possible and to maintain peace and tranquility on the borders. Meanwhile, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian said he didn't have anything to offer on the incident but urged India to exercise restraint. The latest standoff was reported as Indian and Chinese military commanders held the ninth round of talks on Sunday to try and find a way out of the stalemate in Ladakh where the military crisis began last year and erupted into a hand-to-hand -hand combat that left 20 Indian soldiers dead and an unspecified numbers of Chinese casualties. Farmers on Monday began gathering at key border points of Indian capital New Delhi for the proposed tractor rally on the eve of Republic Day. Tractors from Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan reached on Tikri, Singhu and Ghazipur borders as the farmers sit in for protest for nearly two months against the centre's new farm laws. The move comes as Delhi police formally granted permission for the rally on January 26, assigning them routes for the same. Caravans of tractors clogged key highways in northern India on Monday as tens of thousands of farmers protesting against agriculture reforms steamed into the capital ahead of celebrations for Republic Day. India marks its founding as a republic on Tuesday with a military parade in the historic city centre. But the farmers who are demanding a rollback of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's deregulation effort plan their own peaceful show of strength. Security arrangements have also been tightened at the border areas in view of the tractor rally by farmers agitating against the centre's new farm laws for about two months now. Hamari sabhi kisan netaon se baat hui aur baat karne ke baad humne route tay kar liya hai. Aur hum ye mante hai ki Delhi ke vasiyon ko hit mein dhyan rakhte huye rast ka gaurav ko ध्यान में रखते हुए वे सारे लोग ये लोग सारे जिम्मेवार लोग हैं और हम ये समझते हैं कि वो जो बताया हुआ जो रूट है जो म्यूचुअली अग्रीड रूट है उस पे वो जाएंगे 
Meanwhile, over 6,000 farmers from across 21 districts in Western Maharashtra state arrived in Mumbai to begin their three-day sit-in at Azad Maidan in solidarity with protesting farmers at the Delhi borders. Several rounds of talks with Modi's government have made little headway and protesters now aim to up the ante with the processions set to follow Tuesday's military parade. Moving on, the family of slain human rights activist Karima Baloch slammed Pakistani authorities after her body was forcefully taken away by security forces while it was being escorted to her hometown in Balochistan. Karima, who was a vocal critic of the Pakistan army and government atrocities in Balochistan, was found dead under mysterious circumstances in Canada in last December. The family of slain human rights activist Karima Baloch lashed out at Pakistani authorities on Sunday after her body was forcefully taken away while it was being escorted to her hometown in Balochistan province. Karima, a renowned Baloch activist who was found dead in Canada under mysterious circumstances in December last year, was slated to be buried on Monday. However, before the corpse could be transported from Karachi to Balochistan, Pakistani authorities took Karima's body along with her family from the airport to an unknown location. Karima's brother Samir Mehrab in a series of tweets said their hometown Tump was under complete siege by Pakistani security forces. He said, previously we thought only living Baloch are prone to abductions. Here, this is a new law. Even a Baloch dead woman is not spared from abduction by Pakistan. The 37-year-old Baloch activist's mysterious death in December had sparked protest by other activists who alleged role of state actors as she was vocal critique of the Pakistani army and government atrocities in Balochistan. A refugee in Canada, she campaigned extensively against enforced disappearances and human rights violations in Balochistan. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's national security advisor Hamdullah Mohib has said that Taliban does not want peace and that based on intelligence information, the group is making itself ready for the next fighting season. However, Mohib informed the government too is preparing for the upcoming fighting season as Doha peace talks are making slow progress. The Afghan government is preparing for ramped up fighting amid slow progress in the peace negotiations in Doha, with National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib saying the Taliban does not want peace. Mohib said that based on intelligence information, the Taliban is making itself ready for the next fighting season and that the group is trying to take power militarily. According to security officials, a new corps has been established under which all special forces from the Afghan National Army, the National Directorate of Security, the Afghan National Police and the Afghan Air Force will operate to suppress the Taliban. This comes as slow progress in the negotiations between the Afghan government and the Taliban negotiators has apparently reduced the Afghan government's trust in the peace efforts as heads of security agencies said that the Afghan forces are ready to suppress the Taliban. Meanwhile, hope has emerged among the Afghan officials that Kabul's ties with Washington will strengthen and more accurate information about the peace process from the US side will become available from the Biden administration. Afghan officials have said that the former US administration did not share organized information about the peace process with the Afghan government. Moving on to news from Nepal. Amid the political crisis in Nepal, the rival faction of ruling Nepal Communist Party has announced fresh set of protests beginning January 26. This comes as the Election Commission refused to grant legal status to either of the two factions of the party, which has brought some respite to the faction led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, but has arced the other led by Pushpakamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal. The Nepal Election Commission on Sunday refused to recognize either of the factions of the Nepal Communist Party or NCP, one led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and the other by Pushpakamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal. The poll panel stated that both the factions have failed to follow the Political Parties Act 2017 and party statute. 
Both the factions filed an application in the Election Commission claiming authenticity along with the election amble, the Sun. The party broke into two factions on December 22, two days after Oli dissolved the lower house of the Nepali parliament. The recent decision by the Election Commission comes after Nepal Communist Party expelled PM Oli from the party in a decision taken by a central committee meeting amid increasing political unrest following his decision to dissolve the lower house of the parliament. The moves come after the Sprintler group had asked Oli for a reply as to why he shouldn't be removed from the party for making unconstitutional decisions. In the latest, the Dahil Nepal faction has announced fresh set of protests beginning January 26. The demonstrations that will take place in various stages and forms across various parts of the country will continue for two weeks until February 10. More news from Nepal. A group of activists affiliated with the National Unity Movement on Sunday organized a sit-in protest in front of the Survey Department of Nepal, demanding GPS coordinates of border points with China amid claims of land encroachment. The protesters in Kathmandu demanded evidence over the claims made by the government that no land has been encroached on the northern sites. Last year, in the month of September, Nepali local media reported that China had illegally constructed nine buildings in Lapcha Bagar area of Nepal's Hamla district, which is only accessible by airways. Nepal's foreign ministry then issued a clarification over the issue of land encroachment by China, where it had downgraded the media reports of illegal construction in Nepali land. GPS इसलिए यह इस बात से साबित हो रहा है कि नेपाल के भूभाग पर चीन ने वो बिल्डिंग बनाया है और नेपाली भूभाग अतिक्रमण किया है चीन ने इसलिए सरकार जो है जीपीएस कोऑर्डिनेट छुपाने की प्रयत्न में लगी है Scores of devotees from across the country have been visiting India's northern holy town of Ayodhya where the temple of Hindu god Lord Ram is to be constructed. The historically contested site is believed to be the birthplace of Lord Ram. The construction of temple of Hindu god Lord Ram at the historically contested site in India's northern holy town of Ayodhya is drawing visitors from across the country. Scores of devotees were seen standing in long queues outside Hanuman Gadi Temple on Sunday as they came to offer prayers and visit the holy town where the temple is to be constructed. Meanwhile, the stall and shop owners also said they were expecting their business to grow as there was an increase in the sales due to more number of people visiting the town. <laughs> लोगों ने बोला कि रामलला का बहुत इन लोगों को अयोध्या घूमना था तो मैंने बोला चलो मैं भी घूम लेता हूं आप लोगों को भी घुमा दूंगा अयोध्या में इन लोगों को उत्साह देखने के लिए रामलला बहुत दूर से लोग चल के आए हिंदूस बिलीव द साइट इज द प्लेस वेयर रेवर्ड गॉड किंग राम वाज बोर्न एंड देयर वाज अ टेंपल एट द साइट बिफोर मुस्लिम इनवेडर्स बिल्ट अ मॉस्क ओवर इट इन 1992 द मॉस्क वाज डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय अ मॉब ट्रिगरिंग डेडली रायट्स दैट किल नियरली 2000 पीपल the decades-old dispute was brought to an end after the Supreme Court of India last year gave the verdict in favour of Hindus and asked for a separate land to be given to Muslims elsewhere for construction of a mosque. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India says troops had minor face-off with China in Sikkim border area. Afghanistan prepares for fighting season as peace talks with Taliban crawl. And Nepal's election commission decides not to legitimize either of the two factions of ruling NCP. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.